Okay, we're at the beginning of uh, six week of the Princess Nikita and Project 13 crop. So I was looking at some charts, figured I'd let you guys um, look at them with me and see what I'm looking at. So let's start the chart utility. Um, trying to keep my P pH low and the PPMs are dropping at this point. I'm just about to um, refill my tanks, so I stopped my reserve tanks to try to get the least amount of runoff possible and have the plants use as much water and fertilizer in there so I don't dump as much um, in the process. So They kind of rose up a little bit, but um, looking at the pH will generate like a one week chart. So we'll start on uh, there, make it today, we don't need the grow journal up right now, and then we'll just generate a chart. Um, <coughs> you can see I had it up pretty high, that's when I changed it, so you can tell there was a water change right about there, so it's um, pretty much due for another one. But uh, I lowered it, the tank settled out, um, eventually it got raised back up. I think I put too much lower in there at that point, but um, I wanted it a week ago right at around 6, so it kind of blew up and then kind of trickled down from there. This trickle down was pretty much on purpose too, I wanted it to um, go down to about 5-7 from there, because the second thing I was doing at that point was um, lowering my PPMs, which I'm going to um, layer on the chart too. And this is an EC value. <coughs> So I had it pretty high, it was almost at 2, and then um, I, I had to really drop it down because what I'm doing is um, going from 100% the beginning of week 4, week 5, I cut that down to about 77% in strength, and then um, beginning of week 6, it's about 60%, beginning of week 7, you're looking at um, probably around 30%, and then after that it's a zero flush quote unquote I do put a little bit in with my flush but not too much so you can see um, the pH has been going down the PPMs have been going down and I haven't had to add any PPMs here and it's been um, really going down at the right rates you can tell there's a bump each day right here that bump is where the um, reservoir fills out so it uses all the water and then it fills up, <coughs> raises back up the um, content for a little bit, and then it goes. It's probably, actually, it's probably where I added some. If we look at, um, you can also look at a chart with um, my temperatures in there. So we can look at my room temperature versus um, the temperature in that zone, which is right here. here. So, looking at that, you can see um, a pretty good piece of knowledge, too. So, from here, I can see this is my room temp in the red, and then this is my air temp. So, you can definitely see when my 12-hour period off is, it, goes, it drops down pretty significantly from about 81 to about 74. So, I got a really good defined nighttime. You really want it to drop about 6 or 8 degrees at night. And then versus room temperature, that's pretty good too. Only going up about <clears throat> six degrees um, from my core temperature in the room is pretty nice inside that zone. So looking at that with, um, let's say, the humidity. Um, we can all, I've been spraying um, those two times a little bit. But we can see as the heat goes up, um, the humidity definitely goes down. You see a definite trend there. Obviously, I had a little bit of spraying in there, but the um, heat level goes back down, the humidity goes back up. So we can kind of know that keeping it a little hotter in here is going to definitely keep away the PM and everything else in there. But um, you can definitely see, again, that defined lift that it, it gets from the room. What are we talking about? We're talking. 80 degrees versus about 74. So a six degree bump 
um, under a thousand watt, 14 inches away from tops is pretty good. I'm going to go over where I got all my sensors in my tent that these are taking readings from so you can see kind of how I laid everything out too. Um, let's see, what else are we going to look at? <coughs> really the PPMs is um, the one that I'm really concerned about right now and seeing that drop down, um, which now it's about 850, it kind of bumped up a little bit around here when I shut off my um, reserve resi so I didn't add any more water from here so I wanted to take as many gallons as possible out. So that's working out really good. You can probably even see my reservoir bump when it turns on. Um, you can see when it turns on and off and see all the bumps that are starting to happen there. I did two manual bumps right there because um, I just really wanted it to get soaked out. But yeah, that's how everything's going. I'm using the charts. It's really nice using these. Um, I can really go over my all my temperatures in my rooms and what's all happening with them, um, especially my air temp versus my room temp. Um, that's just a really nice chart to have to be able to see what your differences are. And then let's say I take my other zone and I actually throw that in there too as well. Um, so if we look at my B air temp, and let's just take off our room temp and look at these two, <coughs> you can see like a really nice exchange happening. And um, my B is on at night, my A is on in the day, so that also makes sense. And then when we layer it on with the room temp, um, you can kind of see that happening too. And we take that same section. We can see like the room temp and um, my temp pretty much when everything's off is about the same. It's a little bit elevated, but that's just because there's not as much air moving around through it. So this temp shows like the um, exact moment where the two zones turn on and off where that flip-flop relay happens. So it takes like a little second for them to get up to par. You know, I've seen it pretty much around 20 minutes to get cool down all the way and heat up all the way. And then looking, um, if we just take all these off and then I look at my outside temperature and generate that chart, you can see there's like a defined moment where, you know, the heat starts and the heat stops. Really where um, that starts and stops is where I probably want to define my tents on and off. I'm not going to split them up and put them in the day and have both of them get a little heat and both of them get a little cool. I'd rather have one get a little hotter and one get a little cooler so I know in the cooler one I'm probably going to want to put my sativas. The hotter one I'm probably going to want to put my kushas, something that gets like a little bit of mold constantly that I want to keep hotter so my um, humidity stays lower. Because if we look at SF humidity that I have and the um, humidity let's say that I have in where I got all my um, Princess Nikitas. You'll see there's like a definite difference. You'll see when I spray, but you'll see it's going to follow that trend. Um, the red is the outside. Um, it'll follow the trend of what that what's happening there, but I've been able to keep it through air circulation on a pretty constant. Now, I've been spraying pretty often. Um, I have mites, so I've been spraying an isopropyl alcohol and water spray that pretty much takes care of them, kills on contact, kills that, and PM on contact so I've been using that it washes off in seconds and as soon as you spray water on it it's gone. It evaporates really fast too so it, there's no damage to the leaves. I've been doing it with my thousand watt on um, for the most part. But I can really get a also get a really good view of all my zones and everything through this and uh, be able to turn my pumps on and off. And you can actually see on my CO2 chart when I've been in and out of here because um, these rises are definitely when I've been in here a while working, um, puffing and puffing, and uh, making sure it happens. So I just figured I'd look at some charts and um, show you guys a little bit on how this works, and maybe later I'll show you a little bit on how to build the policies and a little bit on how to add some hardware. But um, yeah, just a quick run through, but I'll probably be showing tonight um, the crop itself and show you what I've been looking at and what I've been going through, my picks and how that worked out. 
and uh, everything else. So yeah, stay tuned. All right.